Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel. Now today's a very exciting day. Not only do we get to talk about this interesting and cool subject, but we also get to introduce a new piece of equipment that we can use on the channel. This is going to allow us to connect that theoretical scientific approach and apply it directly to the application. Today is going to be the first time that we're able to do that. What we're gonna be looking at today is the difference between a 2S versus a 3S lithium polymer battery pack used for the same exact power system. What we're going to be doing differently is we're gonna be operating that 2S pack at 100% throttle, hitting the maximum amount of RPM that that power system can push. And then our second scenario is gonna be looking at that 3S pack, but we're gonna operate it at a partial throttle so that we are able to hit the same mechanical output, that same overall RPM. Ultimately, our goal here is to look at which of the two power systems is going to provide us with the most efficient setup. Now, before we move on to the topic for today, I want you to leave a comment in the comment section right down below on two different items. The first one is, before you watch this video, what do you think is going to be more efficient and why? The 2S pack or the 3S pack? And then the second item is, after you watch this video and you understand what this test stand is going to be able to do, what kind of video would you like to see testing out something that you thought of or maybe a theory that you have that we can do on this channel? Let me know in the comment section below. Now let's get started and take a look at our test here today. First thing to do is enable the speed control so that we're able to power up the system. So now what we'll do is we'll go and start to increase the throttle of the motor so that we can see all the different power outputs through this range. Here we do want to hit 100% throttle. We're just about there. And now we are able to take that measurement at that 7450 RPM so that we have that data point set. We should have all the data that we need. We'll just ramp down the speed control here all the way off. And then what we'll do is we'll come over and grab the battery, unplug the 2S pack, and then plug that 3S pack in so that we're able to go and take the next set of measurements and data points on our 3S battery. So this will now arm, and we're ready to start that second test. So we'll slowly ramp up the amount of RPM that we see that the 3S is outputting. Our goal here is to match that 7450 RPM point. So we'll increase that RPM value until we're able to see roughly that point, and then we'll go and take a data point from this information data set that closely matches that point. Somewhere right around here, we're gonna get that 7450 RPM. And we can see that the thrust levels and the actual mechanical power is very similar to the 2S pack, which is all making sense because this is what we would expect. Now that we have all of our data points, we can go ahead, shut the motor off, and then review the information that we've collected. Now the only thing left to do here is to look at all our data points, select two, one from the 2S and one from the 3S trial, and then compare the results. So here you can see, this is the chart from our two data points that we have selected, and both the 2S and the 3S pack comparison come out to the same RPM. When we look at the mechanical output of each of these systems, they are essentially the same thing. But the difference lies in the amount of electrical input to the system. Now the big question is, does this actually make sense? Should it make sense? And what is actually causing it? Well, the quick and dirty answer for does it make sense? The answer to this is yes, it does. And the reason actually lies in the speed control. 
When you look at the overall system, you may think that at a reduced throttle setting, it's going to be a lot less of a load on all the systems operating at a partial throttle. That speed control has to completely chop up the signal in order to produce a partial throttle. And it is this process within the speed control that contributes to the inefficiencies that we are seeing. Now I've used a couple different speed controls in the scenario here today, just to make sure that the overall result is the same. And if you were to go back in the video and look at the ramp up as we increase the RPM all the way to maximum, you can see that at partial throttles, even on the 2S LiPo, the efficiency is not good. As soon as we get very close to that 100%, that is almost essentially 95% throttle or higher, that's where we see the maximum amount of efficiency within our system. Therefore, we can expect that that 3S system, because it's at a much less throttle position, is not going to operate as efficient. Now my recommendation would be, if you're picking a power system, I would not suggest going to a higher voltage pack if you don't plan to be operating at 100% throttle. Make sure that you're picking your power system so that you're able to utilize the throttle position from zero all the way to 100%. If you do select a throttle position from zero to 70%, not only are you giving up that efficiency, which leads to increased amounts of heat throughout your power system, but you are also going to be missing out on the potential of a reliable system. If your threshold for the throttle position is exceeded, you run the risk of burning out your components your motor, your speed control, as well as your battery pack if you did not consider what this extra power could actually result in. Perfect example, if I would have spun up that 2S power system all the way up to a 3S power level, we would have seen a higher amount of current being pushed through our system, which then adds up to a higher amount of wattage, which far exceeds what the 2S power system is capable of. Now I hope this is able to help you out selecting those power systems and if it doesn't help you select your power system I hope it gives you some insight as to what's actually happening at the core of our systems. As always like the video if you do and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that I can see you in that next video. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next Monday. Now if you made it all the way to the end of this video I want to give you a little bit of a sneak peek as to what's happening. Essentially what I'm trying to do is get more than just the one video out per week. I want to get at least two videos out every other week or so so that I'm able to cut down and chew up the queue that I have. Right now I'm looking at about 50 plus videos in queue. Now the next video I don't give too much away but what I can tell you is that it does use this battery pack and it uses it in a very interesting way and it's not necessarily RC related but it does use an RC battery pack. So stay tuned for that. That should come out either Thursday or Friday if all goes well. Again, thanks a lot for watching. See you then.